give him a few seconds here. Hey, Dennis, why don't you start? Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Dennis Adams, Chair of the Conservation Board. And this is our February 9th, 2021 meeting. Uh, let's see. In this package, I don't have the last meeting's minutes, which would have been December. Uh, right, you should receive those last month. I sent them out last month with the agenda, but we ended up not having the meeting. Yep. So hopefully okay. still have All right. Them. Well, are we happy with the minutes uh, as they were sent to us? Yeah, I um, move we approve them. Okay, thank you. I'll see that as an approval of the minutes. And uh, we have five board members here tonight, our vice chair. And uh, ah, and three more of you, great. So Karen Berger is our vice chair and we have George Smith, and Susan Riblett and Matt, there you are. So uh, great, all right. Um, I assume we have no public forum. Nope, okay. Uh, any communications, presentations? Okay, we'll go right to the uh, project reviews. Uh, take these from the top, Rick, or uh, was uh, someone here first? Or um, Yes, we'll take uh, 2A01, or excuse me, 2P01, which is for <clears throat> All right, 4, 440 French Road. All right. The application of Folk and Sinu Hyo owners, EPOD permit. Uh, we have representation here on that project. Yes, good evening. Uh, Tom Fromberger, MRB group, as well as Folk. Um, okay, Tom, you're on. Great. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, just as uh, what we put in our letter, uh, Folk was issued two uh, town violation letters and was not able to obtain the necessary permits. Uh, uh, for clearing brush or removing trees with significant decay and tree removal, uh, which posed a danger to himself and uh, his neighboring properties. Unfortunately, his contractors didn't let him know that he needed the permits. Uh, he has owned the property since uh, uh, the 1970s and has done something similar in the past uh, with the clearing of, of the brush in the back. The trees that he did remove, uh, he spoke with a a certified lance, uh, tree, tree arborist, and they are shown as uh, uh, primarily around the house location. It did visit the site and the dimensions shown on the plans are basically what is left out there now, which is about, let's say six or six inches off the ground is where they've been cut. The rotated X are also uh, diseased and brush trees that were cut down as part of the clearing efforts in the back. Um, there are two pine trees right where Rick zoomed in uh, that still need to come down. One is leaning towards the neighbor's property. The other is, is uh, also uh, dead, kind of the, the southern yellow pine. You can kind of see uh, a lot of the other trees on his property are, are, um, are also somewhat diseased a little bit. He is proposing a fence. Uh, in the 1970s, he, he installed a fence, but he did not conclude it on the east side of the property, which is shown as that white dashed line. He would like to extend that wood fence up to basically the back of his uh, uh, neighboring properties. There was some damage with the, over time, obviously, there's uh, trees that have fallen down and, and damaged the fence. So it was really a combination of trying to get in there and fix it. The contractor, uh, unbeknownst to him, uh, decided after you know, mulching 90% of it, uh, he decided to create a borrow pit in the back and bury it. And that was not acceptable, obviously. And so uh, he was stopped. Um, violation letters were issued. 
And our recommendation is that uh, the branches and debris get taken out of there, the soil be placed back into that hole, and then the mulch, uh, seed and mulch be, be placed back on top of it. So that's mm -hmm. a quick, quick summary. All right, comments from the board. Tom, are you proposing any mitigation for the removal of the trees? We're not, uh, just because they were so diseased uh, as they are. Uh, you can really see, looking into the cores of them, uh, the, that they were bad. Uh, even the arborists uh, agreed that they were, uh, that they, they, they de did need to come down. It looks like, uh, folk, uh, I think you, you're on as well. You can also speak about it too. One of the trees almost, uh, one of the limbs uh, almost fell off and hit his wife just uh, sporadically while he, she was out in the yard. So it's uh, hit his power lines up by the house, uh, also his uh, near his shed too. And so that is the, the first uh, round of, of trees that were removed. But other than just, uh, you know, maintaining that area and, and uh, making sure that the uh, burrow pit is filled in, but those are the only mitigation. Items. So to better understand, all the trees that are coming down are down now, or are there additional trees that have to be removed? As part there of are the only road? two trees that still need to be removed. And those and are the, those are the pines. Those are the pines up in front, and that's strictly a safety. It's not to accommodate his fence or anything. And the total number of trees that you've removed so far, or. The total tr number of trees that have been removed are 24. By two separate contractors. One, one was 14 and the other was 10. Could you give me an idea how many trees remain on the lot? Uh, Folk, are, are you able to answer that question? There's, there's quite a f number. Um, there are many, many trees. Sorry, I don't have a, I don't have an estimate. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I, this was probably, uh, if I had to guess, two percent or five of the property. One percent, maybe five percent. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions? I mean, it seems like it was a thinning of a woodlot. Um, are they, was it just the, the, the health of the tree or did it have any regard to the type of tree or was it just the unhealthy ones that were removed? Uh, it was clearly, folk, you can answer this as well, but it's clearly the, uh, the disease of the trees. Yeah. Yeah, mostly unhealthy ones. Uh, one one tree actually was down already. The one that nearly hit my wife. So, yeah, yeah, mostly dis diseased and endangered the house. Yeah. And most of the remaining trees seem to be in good health at this point. Or do you anticipate others being of concern in the future? Um, they are they are in in most of them. Uh, mm -hmm. I only saw one or two maybe uh, that do not look so good, but most of them are still good. There was one one tree that was down, a big tree, so the contractor chopped them up, and there's still some uh, stumps uh, that are left there that. I'm going to remove. Yeah, overall, the, the remaining trees, they, they look reasonable in health. Um, there are some that, uh, like you mentioned, that are kind of somewhat a little diseased, or you can see boring, you know, beetle bores going into them. But um, I don't anticipate him doing any more clearing, obviously, um, now that he's aware that he is in this EPOD area. And the understory is it allows for regrowth over time, right? It's not a mowed area or anything like that. Correct. Okay. I'm, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone else? Yeah, just one uh, sort of general comment. The, the focus on some of the tree maintenance in these areas has shifted a bit over the last um, 30 or 40 years. Uh, in places where the trees don't pose any risk to the house or to people or to fencing and stuff like that, it's, um, it can be important to actually have large trees that are dead. Um, they provide habitat for certain species, mm -hmm. like owls, for instance. Um, so I, I would just, just as, as a point of information more than anything else, would you know, encourage you to try to consider that as part of a longer term strategy. Um, you know, not, not every tree that's dead needs to be removed. Good point. Good point, yeah. I'll definitely try to preserve as many trees as I can. Mm -hmm. I, I love trees, but uh, except mm -hmm. when they're dead and they pose a danger to the house, that's why I have them removed. Especially, there was one time when the tree, when it fell, it almost hit my wife. So I was getting very concerned. But otherwise, uh, we love trees and we preserve most of the trees at the back. Yeah, he, he even built his fence around one to accommodate it when it was uh, originally constructed, so. Mm -hmm. So there's no additional trees that need to be removed for that fencing, correct? That is correct, Rick. So uh, we are uh, good with simply moving on from this point with the uh, barrel being filled and reseeded. And yeah, I, I, I think it might be wise just that we just um, pass on to the planning board that, you know, we understand the need for the removal of the trees um, as long as it's, it's limited to that as shown on the plan submitted. We all good with that? Good, I am too. Thank all you, right. everyone. All right. Hey, we'll move. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> all right. We'll move on to 2P0221, application of uh, Wendy Fried and Bruce Dan. And uh, we've seen that before. They're uh, looking for final site plan approval and demolition review and approval to uh, raise the two single family home and find the lots and construct a 3,500 square foot two story single family home with a 698 square foot attached garage and a 517 square foot detached garage at 561 and 575 Winton Road South. We uh, want to say anything about that? We have Ed Martin here who can um, speak Okay, to Ed. Sure thing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for uh, hearing us tonight. As you mentioned, uh, first of all, a very good job of describing the project. Uh, the only addition that I could offer to that and, and this board would find uh, pertinent is that uh, we have 38 on-site uh, trees to remain. The code minimum is six, so uh, we're exceeding that by quite a bit. Uh, when uh, my colleague last presented this to your board, you asked that our clients consider some alter alternative energy sources and to consider green practices for this project. And um, what we have before you is some uh, green infrastructure practices in the form of infiltration. We've got some chambers out in the front yard of the new home that will uh, offset runoff quite a bit. I should mention also that as a result of this development, the site imperviousness actually goes down quite a bit. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty low impact project overall. Um, my mm -hmm. clients didn't find the alternative sources of, of energy feasible at this time. Um, so they're, they're hoping that you'll be satisfied with the uh, green infrastructure practices that that we're uh, instituting and be happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, I'll throw that open to the board for questions or comments. Hey Ed, could you just explain to the board what you're doing with the second driveway to the uh, detached garage? 
Uh, sure will. Uh, so the, the detached garage is going to remain and they're going to be converting the vast majority of that driveway to a paver section with grass growing between it. So it'll have the structural ability to handle cars, but uh, it'll actually be mowable. So it'll, it, that, that also is a green infrastructure practice. Thanks for that, that set up, Rick. Are we done? Are we done? Yes, you can close. Oh, okay, close now, right? Okay. Um, can I ask, you mentioned, were there other uh, infiltration practices in the yard beyond the driveway, or is that what you were referring to? No, actually, the, uh, I, I wasn't referring to that at all, although we, you don't get a lot of infiltration in the driveway area just because of the, the nature of its use. It tends to compact the subsoils. But the infiltration I was referring to are some chambers uh, eastward of the new home. Um, there's 43.3 uh, 40, feet, two rows of them, of chambers. So the roof leaders on the south side of the new home and the north side of the detached garage are going to tie into this. So we'll take that right off the the map, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the board? So uh, do we feel then that all our questions from the uh, last meeting have been satisfied? Okay. All right. Then. Rick, would you like to add anything to that? No, I think uh, it, uh, it pretty much covered everything that we had concerns over with uh, the last time we saw it. Mm -hmm. It did get to it did go to the zoning board and get all its necessary variances. So they're back to the planning board just for the final cleanup, final approvals. All right. I'll just make this is sort of please partially related to our role as an environmental board, but you know, to the extent that they can um, take what is in the house and, and donate it to other people who can use it in other homes, I hope they will do that rather than simply demolishing it. Um, I'm sure that there are people who can use cabinets and other things like that in the community. So just encourage that. Not as a, not as a board statement, but just as a related. Statement. No, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll pass it along to my clients. All right. Thank you. Karen. Karen, thank you. I think that's a really important um, uh, value to reinforce in the conversation that this board has. All right. Uh, do we have an EMC report? Thank you, Ed. Thank you. All right. Uh, no green report. Well, the EMC. Wait, no, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was, I was I was waiting. Um, EMC report was the last one was a report on the uh, status of recycling in the county. Um, the uh, waste management just got a new contract for. Uh, I want to say it was ten year contract. So now they're going to upgrade all of their. They can put that money into upgrading their materials so the recycling should go actually better um, now that they have a better a more contract with the county um, and the the status of recycling in the county is really strong they're still making money off of what we put in the bins uh, for the most part um, with the exception of uh, you know glass I mean even plastic despite all the woes and of not sending stuff to China anymore um, there's still markets locally for that kind of stuff. So it's actually, uh, you know, really good business right now. That's it. All right, thank you. A new business, old business. Christine, did you want to add anything? I, I just wanted to check in um, on status of annual report. Um, I know it's due each February and I, don't, I, to be honest, last year was such a blur. I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> if the, the board received, a, the, if the town board received a report or not. Um, but I just wanted to check in to see if it is underway and will be received. We'll look into that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. 
And I and just, uh, town board meets tomorrow night and on the 24th, if you want it included in the proceedings and want to do any presenting, if uh, that would be appropriate. No, usually we just submit it. I figured as much, but you never know with Zoom these days, <laughs> everybody want, might want more screen time. <laughs> it's at least a lower bar. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just have a quick comment. I guess it counts as old business, as business that has seen no progress. I've been busy at school. So the, the Arbor Day tree planting is in the works. Hopefully next month I'll have, you know, the actual plan. I've talked with, uh, with Matt Beeman. Um, you know, everybody's in the loop. It's, it's the, the holdup is me. And then after that, getting the uh, plan for the tree inventory as far as sessions to train people, things like that. You know, everything is set to go, but I haven't, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Mm -hmm. So no news on either of those, but those are still going to happen. Okay. Anyone want to add anything more? And we don't seem to have any tree removals to discuss. So I guess I'll hear a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. All right. We all good on that? All right. Well, thank, thank you, you, everybody. Be well, Good seeing everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.